All right. What's going to do with clean and unclean, but particularly, I'm going to do. I'm going to do with clean um, cattle. I'm going to move a little fast, uh, but you can always pause the screen, okay? Can you highlight for you things I want you to uh, look at? Okay. Animals found on the unclean meat list either be garbage, toxins, and poisons, which becomes part of the meat structure you would eat, or they do not di digest the food properly. It is good that there are animals like vultures, look at that vulture again, people, that eat dead flesh and shrimp or catfish that eat the waste in the ocean. This is part of the cycle of, you know, he says nature, this is how you would made it actually. But the human body was not designed to deal with those poisons. So you thinking you who is just being mean. No, it has to do he's so way much more more intelligent than we'll ever be with our little pea brain. We always want to outthink him. That's why we're dying so early. I wonder why our four parents lived a long time. But the human body was not designed to deal with those poisons. It does not have the same processing organs to eat of those meats is to invite all of those toxins and poisons into your body. All right. Yeah. He says, um, and those friends are exactly what accumulate in our systems and become sickness and disease later in life. And yeah, then, you know, that's just how it is. Move forward. I uh, got a lot to say, so I don't want to spend a lot of time um, trying to get you to understand all about you and not about you and not about me okay me it must have a hoof and the hoof must be part of it must chew its own cud let me highlight for you right quick okay okay it must have a hoof and the hoof must be part of it must chew on its own cud a uh, cloven hoof is divided or split hoof animals that chew their cud are known as rudiments uh, whose stomach consists of four chambers. Food enters the rumen where digestion begins and then it passes to the rectum for more digestion and expulsion upward. True it again. The food returns to a chamber called the omasum and finally to the atmosum where the cud passes into the duodenum <laughs> and intestines. The process occurs in the four stomachs allows rudiments to eliminate bacteria, toxins, parasites, and other items that might become part of the flesh eventually end up in the human body when it is consumed at the table. Okay. Overall it seems pretty wise that we don't eat any animal that does not, that does not, that does not have four stomachs, lacking the ability to remove bacteria, viruses, parasites, etc. So, here go a list. Cattle, sheep, goat, deer, gazelle, roe deer, antelope. I mean, let's look at some pictures of it. Mm -hmm. I like to show uh, visual. There you go. That's a male cattle bull. There go cattle. It's not Elsie neither. Um, and these animals here in America, let, let's keep it straight. Here in America, rules have been violated, so you must... Make sure you're eating animals that are grass-fed 100%. And, and, and believe me, there are those cattlemen out there that will only raise 100% grass-fed. Uh, probably 80% of cattle out there is not grass-fed. I, 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 I would even go as far as saying 90%. Okay, they're given grains with animal byproducts and collagen and bones mixed in it, and the cows chew that. And they're not knowing that they're eating other animals. But they weren't designed to be like that. That's just greedy dogs, greedy, lustful, evil men who definitely, if we're hard headed, will cause us not to be able to go home and who is wrapped to follow up on us. And we're going to have to really get about our father's business seeking the truth. All right. Some more animals. Take them sheep. You see? He has the quad. Rudiment mammals. Earlier, you remember I was talking about that. Let me go back to it. Let's go back. Um, poor chambers. Apologize for my. Okay. 
my exhaustion. <laughs> Have a busy day today. Okay, go back. I just want to show you some similarities in words. Okay, not rocket science. Okay, and there go the boot. Um, Close related to the sheep. Um, deer that the chickens were eating. <laughs> On one of my videos, I was talking about that. Okay. Um, all right, now let's deal with what scripture says, okay? What the word says. And this is what I'm going to spend my, my time on, okay? Okay. The law of clean and unclean found in Leviticus 11 through Deuteronomy 14 was enforced long before Moshin, uh, Moshin. Abel was a keeper of sheep, true, not of pigs. <laughs> Genesis 4, 1 through 5. Jabal, of the line of Cain, specialized in raising cattle. Genesis 4 and 20. The eternal, or Yahuwah, told Noah to take unclean animals onto the ark by two, but clean animals by sevens. You know, more clean than unclean, okay? Genesis 7, 1 to 3. After a safe arrival on Mount Ararat, Noah built an altar and sacrificed of every clean animal and clean fowl. Genesis 8 and 20. By this we learn that Noah already knew, he already knew which animals were clean and which were unclean, and that he knew that sacrifices to Yahuwah must only be with clean animals and clean fowl. So if you don't understand what's clean and unclean, you try to present something in the future to Yahuwah, uh, uh, you know, go over too well. Okay, numerous, and believe me, in the past our people tried. Believe me, nothing, nothing surprised me anymore about if our own people ate their children, you know, who them nothing surprised me. When Eva gets you, Yahuwah turns you over to a reprobated mind or a mind that's like a beast. It's not my issue. Numerous uh, um, confirmations. Okay, let's go for it. Leviticus 10 and 10. The duty of the priest was to teach the people the difference between holy and unclean. Unholy. Between clean and unclean. This, this, is the duty, this is the duty of those of us who are working for Yahuwah. Our duty is to teach our people what's clean and unclean. Not spend time on JC and all his Hebrew names, which he dis he's so disqualified because his forerunner wore camel's hair, a carcass of an animal we can't even eat. Don't. Let's move forward. Let's stay focused here, Stephanie. Because you, you guys going to get in trouble. That's all I got to say about that. You can, be, you can be all kind and sweet all you want. You're going to get in trouble. Because Yahuwah has made it simple and plain for us. And if I can see it and turn, you can see it and turn too. So be prideful if you must. Leviticus 11, 44 uh, through 47. The purpose of the law of clean and unclean is so that Yahuwah's people shall be holy. Be holy. This is the purpose for we can be holy. Even as he is holy, Yahuwah is holy. The law teaches personal cleanliness and righteousness. Leviticus 20, 25 to 26. We need to put first... We need to put the difference between clean and unclean beast and fowl so we shall be holy unto Yahuwah, severe from other people. Yeah, we got to be different. Leviticus 27 11, unclean beasts are not to be sacrificed to Yahuwah. Period. Numbers 18 15, firstborn of man and firstlings of unclean beasts are to be redeemed. Deuteronomy 14 and 2, the purpose of the law of clean and unclean is that Yahuwah's people are to be holy unto him. Not, it's not about you, teacher. Judges 13, 4 and 7 and 14, mother of Samson was uh, admonished not to eat any unclean thing. Job 14 and 4, man cannot bring an un a clean thing out of, un of unclean. That's true. You can't bring a clean thing out of unclean. Ezra is 9 and 11, Isaiah 65, Isaiah 66, Isaiah 66, Ezekiel 22 and 26, false prophets have violated Yahuwah's law. 